YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you guys how I butcher a hind leg of a deer. I killed a doe a couple days ago and I'm now processing. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it, I'm just saying this is my way of doing it. So I'll show you the four different cuts here that I'm looking for what I keep for roasts, for jerky, for grind meat, etc. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First thing I'm going to do is trim up some of the fat and fascia that is still on the outside of this meat. It's important to clean it up a little bit before you really start breaking this down because removing some of this fat will actually help you see the seams that will help guide you when you're breaking this down. One thing that I like to do is draw a line with my knife down the seams of fat. So when you're looking at the hind quarter, you can see spots that are very white, very full of fat. You just lightly run your knife down those seams it'll help kind of open it up so that you can really get your knife in there and clean it up. You'll find that when you're butchering an animal, a lot of the sort of connective tissue that holds everything together likes to pull apart. So if you use your fingers to help guide your knife in a way, but not exactly guide your knife, you know what I'm saying, it will be helpful in removing some of it and separating the muscle groups. That's pretty good for a preliminary cleaning. We'll definitely clean this up more as we go through. Now you'll notice there are some seams that are really starting to show themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my fingers in here and really just pull it apart. So this piece right here will need maybe just a little bit of cleaning up, but this will be great for the grind pile. So right here, you can see there's another seam here. I'm just going to rip it apart with my fingers. Run your fingers right down in there, rip it apart. Okay. So what we just uncovered here is called the eye of round. Sometimes you'll hear this being referred to as the hidden tenderloin. It's a similar size and shape to a tenderloin and it doesn't have any connective tissue running through it. So, I'll go ahead and cut this out first. sure to remove all of these little pieces of fat that you see. Fat can make your meat taste rancid over time, so before you put that in the freezer or cook it, it also does, just doesn't have a pleasant taste, you want to make sure to remove it. That's cut number one. Now, you look in here, there's a lot of connective tissue. When it pulls apart like this, it's just begging you to cut through it. It's like painting with, wait, what's it called? Like coloring with numbers or coloring with lines and coloring with whatever. There's a guide for you telling you where to make your cuts. I'm going to flip this towards me so I can get a little better view. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to show. Ooh, yeah, right in there. That. Again, I'm just working along the lines. You can't mess this up if you work along the lines. You're not going to break up a group of muscles that should have been together or anything. There's no real way to mess it up as long as you paint with the lines, color with the lines. That's all you got to do. Right here, 
we have the bottom round. This little chunk hanging off, this is going to be cut into grind need. But I'm going to clean it up first, but I'm just going to set that aside for now. Beautiful cut right there. I'm going to keep going through here. So now I'm at the point where the lower portion of the leg is clearly separated from that upper thigh, if you will. And now I can see or almost feel that femur bone running down between these last two muscle groups. So at this point, I'm going to take my knife and just very carefully remove these last two larger groups away from that bone. So you can see where this meat was. And because of everything that we removed, we can now see this nice section where the lower leg is separated from the upper leg and the bone runs right down the center. So I'm just gonna hold this, run my knife right along that bone, and just slowly peel it all away. It's okay if you leave a little bit of meat on the bone, that's going to happen. That will be good in your, in your bone broth. help me open this up a little more, I'm going to cut right here so you can see how it gets really white in here. You'll just make a little cut right through there. You can feel that bone that you'll cut around, or the kneecap rather. That'll allow you to gain better access and view of where you're cutting at in here. Once you get down to the bottom here, Again, see that seam just telling you where to cut. Beautiful. This little bit that's left at the top, I'm going to cut that off. That'll be great for grind. So before I move back to that meat that I just cut off, I'm going to remove this bone from the lower portion of the leg. I'm going to cut at that insertion point where the muscles are connecting. Cap. And you'll begin to see where naturally this all wants to separate, down where that joint is. This bone will be used for bone broth. So just as it is, I'll make sure that I clean up the hairs real nice, but I'm going to set this aside for that. Back to our chunk of meat that we just removed from the bone. One thing that you want to make sure that you do is cut out the gland that sits sort of in the hot pocket of all of this meat. You don't want to include that in what you eat. It runs right in the center. It's covered by fat. So you'll remove it anyway without even knowing that you did. But just so you are aware when you're butchering your meat. Now that that gland's gone, I'm going to separate the sirloin tip from the top round. And again, there's a seam, and really I could just pull these apart, mostly with my hands, if I wanted to. Here we have our sirloin tip. This is great for a roast. Clean it up a little bit, that'll be good to go. And then here we have our top round. Now there are some extra little pieces of meat that I'll cut off of here for grind meat. So I have my four main cuts of meat separated. I have my bottom round, my top round, my sirloin tip, and my eye of round. I also have some grind meat that has come apart from other small muscle groups. I do have the lower portion of the leg that you can either use as asabuco or the shank and leave it on the bone. You'll basically just run a saw right here, right here, and then you can put that whole thing in the crock pot and slow cook it. You can also remove this meat and use it as grind meat. Sort of your choice. I'm going to go ahead and clean up these cuts and then I'll show you how I have learned to cut this into jerky. This eye of round I'm going to keep as is and we can cut it into little medallions for steaks, literally just as we would with a tenderloin. And then this sirloin tip has, it still has some silver skin on it. I'm not as worried about the silver skin, mostly just the fat. So that'll get wrapped up as is, and that is a roast. 
Now on to the top round and the bottom round. Now the top round has these really nice striations. You can see the grain running up and down. So I'm going to turn these into jerky. And all you do is cut against that grain and you can choose the thickness that you like depending on your preference. So if you like a thick jerky, keep it thick. If you like it really thin, take your time and make it super thin. So I'll start by just cutting it into a couple sections. If you're not a fan of jerky, you can also keep this for steaks or you could make stew meat out of it. Doesn't matter. It's a nice thin piece of jerky. The main thing to note here is that you're cutting against the grain. That will make for a more pleasant eating experience with your jerky. Now eventually, when we're ready to cook these, we'll take them to the smoker, our little pellet grill smoker. We'll smoke them on there. So I'm going to repeat this process for all of this meat for the top round and the bottom round. Package it up with some plastic wrap and freezer paper. Call it a night. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will definitely create a video when we're actually making the jerky and making the bone broth and all of that good stuff. So you can tune back in to see what our lovely meat turns into. That's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.